Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today I'm going to do something kind of radical. I may blow some of your minds and you may be going, Jimmy, what in the world are you doing? What am I talking about? I am actually going to be pruning back some of my plants that are currently blooming. Yes, I am. I'm going to be cutting them back because I know in the long run it is going to be better for the plant and it is going to be better for me, the gardener. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to take you, uh, I think there's four different areas that I want to prune. Yes, it is the end of June, 1st of July here in North Carolina. I have a very long growing season. I can plant my annuals in you know late March, early April, and they can go all the way through my first frost hard freeze, which could be in November. Extremely long growing time here in our zone 8A gardens. And sometimes I need to prune those plants back so that they look the best and perform the best for the entire length of the season. So mostly we're going to be looking at some annuals that I will be pruning today, but we are also going to be pruning some hydrangeas. Yep, that is right. So we're going to go through and I'm going to explain why I am doing what I am doing to these certain plants so that you have information for your garden. Now, be a student of your own garden. If you are like me and you have a very long growing season, then maybe these are some tips and tricks that you can implement into your garden right now. If you live in a much colder zone that you have a much shorter growing period, maybe this doesn't apply to you. This would just give you some ideas of what we have to do in these areas that we have longer growing times or maybe it can. So right, so this is going to be an, a perfect example of being a student of your own garden and doing, uh, taking this information that I am giving you and do what is best for your garden. Here we are clearly in the signature garden and everything, look at that, is absolutely thriving. It is thriving and it is looking fantastic. However, I want it to stay looking fantastic throughout the entire season so that as we have guests in July, August, and September, early October, it looks really good. Um, and so we are actually gonna be focusing today on pruning the Mystic Illusion Dahlias. This is the first time that I have actually grown these dahlias in the landscape. I love them. They're gorgeous with that black foliage, bright yellow flower. Um, I have not pruned them at all. However, I need to take them back a little bit. So I am going to show you exactly how I am going to prune these dahlias and then of course explain why I am doing that. So here we have an example of this Mystic Illusion Dahlia. It has gotten some really beautiful height to it, but it is getting a little bit big for this area and I have my little line punches behind and I want to uh, make sure that those punches have plenty of room to grow, bloom, and thrive. Also, we're going to take this down because I've got some um, old buds here that they were older blooms and I want to make sure that this dahlia continues to bloom. So what I am doing is I am coming in here and where I have these tall stalks, I'm just going to come in to where the next set of leaves are and I am going to go ahead and prune it. This way it creates a nice tight habit on the dahlia, right? Dahlias respond really well to being pruned. In fact, and we're going to try a little shorty right here. We're going to try to wiggle a little foot so I can have some room right here. Whatever kind of dahlia you have, whether you have this mystic illusion or you have, uh, you know, dahlias like in my dahlia garden, they love to be deadheaded and pruned. They get nice and thick they will continue to put out more and more flowers when we do this. With our very long growing season, I want to make sure that I have a very nice, tight, compact habit on my plant that gives me gorgeous flowers throughout the growing season. So you can see that I'm taking some height off of here. Now I have buds right here. I'm gonna leave those buds alone. I'm not gonna cut those off. And honestly, if I were to have a visitor come right now, they probably would not even be able to tell 
that I have just pruned this dahlia. That is my goal in this instance. We're going to do some other instances in the backyard where it's going to be very obvious that I just did that. Um, but here in the display garden, I want it to look um, very natural, right? All you see is a nice compact plant. And as I'm doing that, my little lime punches back here are beginning to be seen, right? And in fact, I've got buds on my little lime punch where it's getting lots of sun. And then right here where the dahlia was, not quite so many. They're, they're there, they're just smaller. So if you have, whether it is a dahlia, whether it is a coleus that I have next door that's getting a little too tall, maybe it's getting a little leggy, you can literally just come in and where you've got two leaves that are coming out, cut right there in the middle. And that's all you have to do. Now, what I'm gonna do is move on down the line. I've got two sides of these raised beds to do, but nice tight habit. It's not been severely pruned. It doesn't look terrible. Um, and we're gonna have lots of flowers here in just a couple of days. So I'm going to go ahead and get these dahlias done. All of the Mystic Illusion Dahlias have been pruned back and already I can see my little lump punches beginning to emerge and start to be the start of the show. That's the thing about gardens, right? They're always changing, they're always evolving, and even when you have annuals planted with your shrubs and different, different components, right? Different parts of the season, you're going to have different ones that shine these dahlias of course are going to rebloom right did i delay some flowers by cutting them back i did am i worried about it no i am not because there's plenty of other plants here that are going to give us a beautiful display now honestly i desperately need to come in here and trim back the petunias that's going to be another day right i have certain i have certain things on my list that i want to get done today and these petunias are not part of that but in, to ensure that they still look nice and tight, they look nice and full, I will come back and give the, both the, um, I've got Mini Vista Indigo, I've got Saffron Finch, and the Superbina Pink Cashmere. The, all of those are going to get a haircut. It will not be massively severe, but they will get a trim so that way they thicken up and so that I can start to see some other things. My Plum Dandy, my Cerveza and Lime, all of those are gonna come along and shine together. What we're going to do now, we're going to move to hydrangeas. There's a very specific type of hydrangea that this is the perfect time for me to prune so that I get a whole nother flush of flowers in the fall. So let's move on over and look at some hydrangeas. My friends, here we are standing beside Invincible Ruby. Invincible Ruby is a smooth hydrangea. So smooth hydrangeas, um, Hydrangeas that are in that family, um, Incredibles, you have the classic Annabelles. Those are, 
your smooths. Smooths bloom on new growth, meaning that we prune it in late winter. We get a beautiful flush of flowers pretty early on in the season. Your smooths will bloom before your paniculatas, kind of even for me, even before my max. So this is going to be one of my very first blooming hydrangeas in the garden. And then Isabel Ruby, of course, gets her name because she has a color specific flowers that are a nice ruby red flower and a nice ruby red color. So what we're going to do is she is on the end of her bloom cycle, right? So we have got hydrangeas that are starting to turn brown. Desperately, we need some water. You might be able to see that she's got is a little wilted. We are right here on the creek bank that is not on irrigation. This is on the house side of the creek bank. And I love the rubies because they do bloom on new growth. We are guaranteed to have flowers every single year. With this nice ruby red color, we can see it from a far distance on our porch or when you're coming in to visit the nursery, you can see these rubies. Now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and give her a nice light prune. I am doing that in the hopes of that I will get a fresh flush of flowers this fall. As long as we get some good rain between here and there, we will get flowers because she blooms on new growth. So from your smooth hydrangeas, you can go ahead and you can come in and just like the dahlias, I am going to cut right above two leaves. I have, I'm only gonna take off, um, I'm not gonna do a severe haircut. In fact, if you didn't even wanna take this much off, this is about, I don't know, 12, 10 to 12 inches off. If you don't wanna take this much off, you literally could just take off the flower right above two leaves and that is going to encourage branching. It encourages new growth, and since it blooms on new growth, when you encourage new growth, you're also encouraging new flowers. So we're just gonna give them a nice little haircut, and there you go. My Incrediballs that are in the back patio, I'm gonna do the same thing to them as well. However, I am going to wait till after July 4th. July 4th, we always have a big family celebration here at our house. We always gather on the patio. We have um, yummy food and time together. So I want the Incrediballs to stay until July 4th. That's really about like one week from now. And then after July 4th, I will go ahead and give them a very nice light prune, take off those uh, old heads. That way we get a second flush of gorgeous flowers this fall. So that is why I am pruning my smooth hydrangeas. I am not touching my panicle hydrangeas. They're just now starting to bloom. I don't wanna cut those off. I want to leave those alone. If you have macrophylla hydrangeas or you have serrata hydrangeas and you need to shape the plant up, right? So you just need to give it a, a nice prune. This would be the perfect time to do it. Their blooms are getting, you know, on the way out. You can go ahead and cut them and make gorgeous vase arrangement, right? So you could absolutely take these flowers, make an arrangement and enjoy them. So that would be the good time if you need to, only if you need to shape the plant for your serratas and your macrophyllas because they bloom on old growth. So that means they're gonna do, they're gonna regrow, they're gonna set their buds later this summer into fall for next year. So I'm gonna get my smooth Invincible Rubies pruned back. Vincent Bell rubies have been pruned back. Now, if you want to really encourage and try to get some great new growth so that you get your flowers, this would be a good time for you to go ahead and fertilize, right? So you can go ahead and re-fertilize 
for hydrangeas, I like to use rose tone. They have the same um, needs as that. It's a woody flowering ornamental shrub. So they have those same needs as a rose. So you can just do a nice little dose of some rose tone on them. Give them a good drink of water. Obviously, if you have them on irrigation or they're getting consistent water, you're going to have even more luck of getting that second flush of flowers. These are kind of on their own. This, this is the area of tough love, right? <laughs> when we go to the back patio with the Incredibles, they're a little more pampered because that is such a high visibility area. But with your smooth hydrangeas, if you want to try to get a second flush of flowers, prune them. If you don't want to get a second flush of flowers or you don't have um, a long enough growing season, leave them alone. It is fine. I am just trying to let you know that that option is available to you. What we're going to do now is we're going to head to the back, the patio. It is going to be toasty there and we are going to prune some Cleome because that Cleome is, whoo, she's a happy girl and we need to bring her down a notch. We're on the back patio, my friends, and if you have any question at all as to what we're going to be pruning, it will be the Senorita Rosalita Cleome behind me because, dear heavens, she clearly loves this flower bed. You were with me in the spring when I planted these, and y'all, they are a show to be seen, absolutely. However, we're going to prune them. Y'all, these, this is one Cleome, one Cleome, one, one, one. Now, here there are three because I have a corner back there uh, that needed to be filled in. And then, yeah, overachiever Jenny planted five. Don't think I needed five right there. I think probably three would have been just fine. So what we're going to do is we, like I said, we are really going to prune these. And when I get done, some of you are going to have a heart attack. Some of you are going to think I have lost my mind and that I am crazy. And why in the world would you do that? You're cutting off all these beautiful flowers. I can read the comments in my brain right now. Y'all, just trust me, okay? So being a student of your own garden, I am a student of my garden. I gave y'all heart attacks last year when I did this massive severe prune to my deck boxes. Three weeks later, they were beyond gorgeous. They were 10 times prettier than what they were when I chopped them. So the reason that I am doing this is because if left unchecked, this Cleome will just continue to grow and get fuller and fuller and fuller. We're going to get inevitably a big summer thunderstorm with high winds and it will lay these down. Then I'll have to do it. I'm being preventative. So I want to go ahead and really bring these down. Also like here, and this is just, y'all, everything's a learning curve. I don't care how long you've been gardening. If you're not learning in your gardening, in your garden, then you're not trying hard enough. You're not pushing the limits. And so you can see that this Cleome is growing into, um, is growing into the rose. I need to give that rose some room to breathe and to grow because the rose is more important than the Cleome. Cleome is an annual. This rose is going to be, this deceptor isle, is a obviously a shrub and a perennial. I want it to grow, bloom, and thrive for many years. Same thing with my diamond spire gardenia. I need to get sun on this. So I am really going to whack it back. Again, I'm gonna give some of you heart attacks. I promise it will be fine. So what I'm gonna do is just set the camera up and then I am just going to go at it. I could use hedge trimmers if I wanted to. I think this will be easier um, and faster as far as a cleanup to use just my Felcos. So I'm gonna throw my gloves on and I am going to go ahead and prune these. I am not being specific as far as when I prune them. If you want to, you absolutely could. Same thing with the hydrangeas and the dahlias. Go where you have right above two leaves and cut it and it will branch out. I am not gonna do that. I am just gonna come in here and whack it. When I get done, it's going to be sticks. We're gonna give it a little bit of water and then they will start to grow immediately back. And in two weeks, they're gonna be thick, they're gonna be full, and they're gonna be full of flowers again, but in a much more manageable, controlled way. So I'm just gonna start grabbing and cutting and making big old piles of Cleome.
All right, my friends. So uh, yeah, they are they are chopped. The Chelsea chop has happened here with the Cleomi. That's a mouthful. The Cleomi Chelsea chop. There you go. They are down and well watered. Made a huge difference. Just go in there and whack them. Now, did I make a mistake by planting the Cleomi there? Possibly. Uh, that's that's subjective. Are they clearly very happy there? They are. Uh, last year I did the Sun Patience White. That was a very nice size, but you can also see that my shrubs are growing, y'all. So I've got the Sprinter Boxwoods, I've got the White Shishi Camellia in there, and they're just growing. So, you know, the shrubs take precedence here, and that's okay. I don't mind this one bit. Now, I know that it has completely changed how this area looks, and that is perfectly fine. We had the signature experience, you know, uh, on Friday, not even a week ago. I never in a million years would have done this before the experience. They were here, they were gorgeous, they were beautiful. The time has come. That is what, that is what it is, my friends. Now, I know some of you may notice my hanging baskets. They are very dry and looking sad and pitiful. Yeah, I've got baby birds. I have baby birds in both of the hanging baskets. So I have withheld the watering for right now uh, so that I don't drown the birds. And so as soon as they fly the coop, as soon as they fly the nest, then we will get in there and water um, I th and probably go ahead and trim up the Silver Falls, maybe have to replace the begonias. We'll just see how everybody bounces back. But I know somebody's going to notice those hanging baskets. So I just wanted to go ahead and just let you know that I, I know what's happening and what's going on. And the deck boxes themselves are absolutely gorgeous. The roses are in bloom. Love Desdemona. I mean, look at that, y'all. Supermina pink cashmere. Brand new Kufia that will be on the market next year. Look at that, gorgeous. The new Dahlia, it will be in there as well. The white Angelona, all will be available next year. Those are new 2025 introductions. But yeah, everything is looking fantastic. So what if the Cleomi got chopped? There's plenty of other beautiful things in here to look at. So do not be afraid to go in there and prune mid season, especially your annuals. I can't think of any annual except maybe an annual like a grass that would not benefit from being pruned back. So if something is getting a little out of control, a coleus, a verbena, a petunia, um, whatever, basil, right? just prune it back. You can prune it back as much or as little as you like, and I promise it will bounce back and be as happy and um, healthy as ever. So don't be afraid to get out there and prune some of your plants mid-season, especially if you have a very long growing season like I do. Trust me, the plants will be just fine. All right, my friends, as always, we so appreciate you. Thanks for gardening the Creekside. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.